Hi, it's Justin Tuckwell at Blue Pekin Computer Training. In this video, we're going to look at conditional formatting in charts. We've got two examples. The first example, we're looking at monthly sales. And we're going to have the top performing month in one colour and the lowest performing month in another. And then our second example, sales against target. Every column representing a sales that has made the targets in one colour and that hasn't in another. And all of this conditional formatting will apply even when we change the data. So for example, in a, let's change May's figure to something like 3000, it automatically gets the best performing month color when I do that. So let's start with some data. And the trick here is to have a different column for each color that you want to display on your chart. Essentially, you need different series for the different color. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a series for the best month, series for the worst month, and then a series displaying any data points that are not the best month or the worst month. So I'll start with the best month column. And essentially in this column, I need to find out what the best performing sales figure is. So I can use the max function for that. And that returns 2,670. But I don't want that value in that cell. I want it in that cell. And the rest of the cells just, just show zero. So I can use the if function for this. I can say if the unit sold source is equal to the result that the max function gives, and I'm going to need to fix the range of cells that the max function refers to, because I'll be copying this down. If that's true, return that value, otherwise return a zero. Now ignore that little bit of custom formatting there. Now I'm going to copy this down. You'll see that it'll pick up the best month value in that column. Now I'm going to do something very similar for the smallest value. I'm just going to copy that. And for the smallest value, all I need to do is change max to min. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. So just min instead of max. Copy this down. And it picks up the smallest value. In the unit sold column, what I want to say is, if this is a zero and this is a zero, the best month is a zero and the worst month is a zero, I want to show the unit sold for that month. So I'll start with an AND statement here. I can say, is that value equal to zero? And is that value equal to zero? And you'll see that gives me a true and false result. So then I can put that in an if, and I can say if that is true, if they are both zeros, return the unit sold, otherwise return a zero. Copy that down, and you now get units sold for uh, the rest of the months where we don't have a best month figure or a worst month figure. So now I'm ready to create my chart. So I'm going to click anywhere in the data. I'm going to go up to insert and I want to create a column chart. And I get this, which doesn't look exactly like the kind of chart that I want. So we need to do a number of things to it to make it work for us. Now, first of all, I don't need the unit sold source column. So on the design tab of my ribbon under chart tools, I can go to select data and can get rid of that column of figures. So now I've just got the columns within my chart that I actually want. So the columns are a little bit skinny and also you can see they're offset against the actual category labels. It'd be nice if they were centered on the category labels here. So what I'm going to do is right click on one of the columns, format data series. I get two useful options here, series overlap. I'm going to set that to 100%, which basically means these three series are now overlapping each other, which means they are centered on the category labels, which is what I want. I can change my gap width to make the columns a little bit thicker. Now I'm going to get a problem when I try and add data labels to my chart because what it's going to do is it's going to display these zeros. Now I could have got around this by changing my if statement to return an empty text string, 
but it gets very awkward if you have blank cells in your data when you come to actually create your chart it won't easily select all the columns and all of the data because there are basically empty cells in your data so i prefer to have zeros in the cells and then and then convert those zeros through custom formatting to blank cells so to do that what we can do is select the cells that we want to format control one brings up format cells go to the custom category and then the way to do this is to actually write in a custom format now the custom formats are made up of four parts the first part is for positive numbers you separate the parts of the semicolon the second part is for negative numbers so i'll put another zero in the third part is for zeros which i don't want to display anything for and then the fourth part is the text so i haven't actually put anything in the third and fourth parts the third part for zeros i want to show just as a blank cell and we don't have any text value so i haven't bothered with the last part so if i click on ok it gets rid of the zeros and it appears just as I want it to in my chart. I get rid of the legend, I get rid of the grid lines, and get rid of the vertical axis. Now, if I change a value in my unit sold source column, say I make June 3000, press enter, it gets the formatting for the best month. Okay, so let's go on to our second example. We've got our salespeople and the sales they achieved in 2017. Here's our sales target. Now what I'm going to do is do an analysis of sales against the target. So the first column here is going to show how much above the target each person has achieved, if they have. And this one, how much below the target each person has achieved, if they have. Uh, if they haven't appeared, if they haven't achieved above target, I want a zero. And if they haven't be achieved below target, I want a zero in the cell. So uh, I use another if function here, and I'm going to say, is this value here greater than the sales target, which I need to fix the reference to? If that's true, I want to find out how much above it it is. So it would be the sales value minus the sales target, which would be fixed. Otherwise, I would return a zero. So if I copy that down, you'll see I'll either get a zero or I'll get an above the sales value value. So let's move on to the below column. So I can use another if for this. I can say, is this less than the target? I should fix. If true, I would say this minus the target so I'd get a negative value otherwise zero I'll copy that down you can see I'll get those negative values now, I want to get rid of the zeros now, I should better do that with the format painter if I click up here go to my format painter and I can copy and paste the formats onto those cells so the zeros disappear Right, let's see how this works. So I'm going to click into my data, insert. And for this, I'm going to create another column chart. So I need to get rid of the sales 2017 series. So I can go up to select data and get rid of that. And then I need to do my trick on the data series. Now it's slightly off the screen, but I'm choosing the option at the bottom of the menu, Format Data Series. That brings this up, so I can change my series overlap to 100%. That centers all the columns on the category labels. And I'll just change the gap width a little bit. Now a nice trick here is to move the category labels above the columns. So if I right click on that, and I'm going down to, again, it's off your screen, but right at the bottom it says Format Axes. And then I can go down here, go to Labels. And I can say Label Position High. I can then put my data labels on. 
and I'm there. So if I change my target, let's change it to 2,500. It automatically changes which columns appear in which color. Now, the only other thing that I have noticed that I probably would change is when we copied and pasted the formatting from this sheet, from this table onto this sheet. In the first one here, we didn't have any negative values, but it would be quite nice to show the below figures here in as a negative value. So what I'll do is if I select all those cells, control one, all I need to do is just modify the negative value portion of that custom format by putting a negative value in there, negative sign in there, click on OK, and that fixes that quite nicely. So let's get rid of our grid lines. Maybe we can get rid of the vertical axis and get rid of the legend and we're good to go. Now, if you do come across this scenario where you need values or data points that are negative in a different color, there is another way to achieve this without using my method here. Uh, if we right click on a data series, a format data series, and what we're going to do is format the fill color. There is this option here for invert if negative. So you may prefer to use that option, but the principle still stands that if you want to apply conditional formatting, you essentially need to have different columns to represent different series within your chart. Okay, so two examples of applying conditional formatting to Excel charts. Chester Tuggle at Blue Pecan Computer Training. Thanks very much for listening.